Hello, I'm Micah, aka Knob Twister, a host from the podcast you're about to fill your ear holes with. My co host Dustin, aka Sofa Sitter, and I research, read, and discuss fairy tales worldwide. The episodes are 60% fun, 10% educational, and 37% crazy. But alas, all good things do end, and Tales of Bedlam disappeared for a few years. So, please disregard any reference to a website or announcements during the episode. For more fairy tale fun, follow, like, and share us on Instagram and Facebook at Tales of Bedlam, or visit our website from the link in the show notes. Enjoy the show! But the morning star arose and gave her the drumstick of a chicken and said, If you have not that drumstick, you cannot open the glass mountain, and in the glass mountain are your brothers. What? Welcome to Tales of Bedlam. I'm your host, Micah. I also host as well. We are Tales of Bedlam, a podcast completely devoted to the brothers' grim fairy tales Mm -hmm. and other fairy tales that might just tickle our fancy. That means we're not completely devoted to them, but that's fine. Yes. I wouldn't argue with you. We love Grimm's we fairy love tales. We love fairy tales. And we love to talk about them. Yeah, we do. We love to talk about anything, but fairy tales are good. We are doing The Seven Ravens today to make this podcast even more amazing, if that is even possible. It's not even remotely possible, but we'll, we can buy uh, Micah some fancy swimwear to pose with and we'll put it on the website (laughs) so today's tale is the seven ravens dustin take it away oh i was going to mention that you're speedo but we'll just skip that the seven ravens there was once a man who had seven sons hmm and still he had no daughter however he much wished for one this never ends well never in the history of all the stories we've read Has anybody wished for a child and had one and it ended well? Hmm. No. Well. No. Well, that's not true. Say it ended well. End well, but it's just it's just heartbreaking. It's hell in the middle part. Yeah. Mm Hmm. Just you know what? If you've got seven sons, be happy. Just get yourself fixed. You don't need to have any more kids anyway. Be content. They will have grandchildren. It'll be fine. One of them will. It will really be fine. At length, his wife again gave him hope of a child. And when it came into the world, it was a girl. Woohoo! The joy was great, but the child was sickly and small. It had Mm. mm -mm. sickly and small. And it had to be privately baptized on account of his weakness because we can't publicly baptize a weak child apparently well they wouldn't have been able to probably move the child to the local monastery oh because of his sickness the father sent one of the boys in haste to the spring to fetch water for the baptism the other six went with him and as each of them wanted to be first to fill it the jug fell into the well Mm. there they stood and did not know what to do and none of them dared go to the home. That sounds like you send a bunch of boys to a job. That's exactly what happens. Hmm. They screw it up, and then they just stand around looking at each other. I don't know what happened. I don't know it. As they still did not return, the father grew impatient and said, They have certainly forgotten it while playing some game, the wicked boys. Wicked. He knew about the boys. He became afraid that the girl would have to die without being baptized. (laughs) Wow. And in his anger cried, I wish the boys were all turned into ravens. What is with parents wishing their children as animals? I don't know. But they had no water at all in the house. Nothing. They didn't even like have a glass of water set aside somewhere they could baptize the poor dying kid with whatever i think that they said that it needed to be no spring 
and he didn't. didn't where where they, was it? They sent him to fetch water for the baptism from the spring, but hmm. I don't think that you particularly need spring water to baptize somebody. You just need water that's been blessed by whatever priest is doing it. Maybe the boys had drank all the water and they needed more. I I don't know. Who knows? Hardly was the word spoken before he heard a whir. Whirring. A Mm -hmm. whirring of wings over his head. Looked up and saw seven coal black ravens flying away. (laughs) The parents could not withdraw the curse. Mm -hmm. And however sad they were at the loss of their seven sons, they still, to some extent, comforted themselves with their dear little daughter, who soon grew strong and every day became more beautiful. Uh, of course she did. <sighs> not more smart, not more beautiful. cunning, mm. not more... Right? Self-reliant, assured, <laughs> fierce. Just beauty. That's she all that matters in this world. She was supposed to screw the boys that got turned into ravens. We have a beautiful girl. <sighs> For a long time, she did not know that she had brothers, for her parents were careful not to mention them before her. They lied. Why? But one day, she accidentally heard some people saying of herself that the girl was certainly beautiful, but -hmm. that in reality, she was to blame for the misfortune which had befallen her seven brothers. It was her fault. She was a sick little baby. Mm. People. Then she was much troubled and went to her father and mother and asked if it was true that she had had brothers and what had become of them. The parents now dared keep the secret no longer, but said that what had befallen her brothers was the will of heaven. Mm -hmm. And her birth had only been the innocent cause. Mm -hmm. For the maiden took it to her heart daily and thought she must save her brothers. Now... Wait a minute. How is it the the girl's fault? It was the father who said, I wish they were ravens. No, they didn't say it was her fault. They said her birth had been the innocent cause. I know. I think the cause was the father who muttered Mm -hmm. the curse. I don't disagree with that. But if she would not have been born sickly and they would not sent the brothers there and then the curse would have never been uttered. So her birth was ultimately the cause. Eh? No. No? No. The cause was the father saying, I wish the boys were all turned into ravens. I agree. But I guess he can't be troubled with being blamed for such a thing. No, oh, because this is this is parents in the gr- brother's grim world, and they all <laughs> suck. They're terrible, terrible parents. She had no rest or peace until she set out secretly and went forth into the wide world to search for her brothers and set them free. Let it cost her what it might. Well, see, she was pretty and good-hearted. That's That's good. good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She took nothing with her but a little ring belonging to her parents as a keepsake, a loaf of bread against hunger, and a little pitcher of water against thirst, or in case some other sickly kid needed to be baptized. And uh, that's not what it said. And a little chair has provision against weariness. Hmm. So she's just carrying around a chair? I, well, like a camping chair. When I used to backpack, oh, well, we had camping so chairs. She's got a little poor one hmm? there. Because the, the, eight, the 19th century German girl had a portable camping chair. <sighs> yeah, it probably folded up and mm-hmm. put in a nice little bag with a little string mm. pulled tight at the top. <laughs> Yeah. She ordered it on Amazon. No, we've gone past that. I'm Shameless. <laughs> and now she went continually onwards, far, far to the end of the world with her loaf of bread and pitcher of water. Then she came to the sun. Oh, what? Wow, she went a long ways. That's not the end of the world. We're going to the end of the solar system. It must be a flat earth. It is a flat earth. You didn't know that? That's a whole other podcast. But it too was hot and terrible. Oh, wait a minute. But it was too hot and terrible and devoured little children. Whoa. Mean son. Hastily, she ran away and ran to the moon 
but it was far too cold and also awful and malicious. And when it saw the child, it said, I smell, I smell the flesh of men. What? The moon? Wow. Um, I think now would be a good time for a sponsor break. I don't disagree with that. I think we need to process a bit. How would you like to have your very own Tales of Bedlam swag? Who wouldn't? I would. We have great news. The great overlords of Brickle Brit, Inc. And Death himself have decided to make our swag available to everyone. (laughs) You don't want to go against Death. But it doesn't end well. You can now get t-shirts, coffee mugs, tote bags, hoodies, stickers, and even adorable little onesies for your new little baby babies in a wide variety of sizes and colors right from our website. Tales of Bedlam swag is great for any occasion and is a great way to show your support and help us spread the word of our earth-changing podcast to everyone you know. It has changed the earth. Mom will love our hoodies to snuggle up with while listening to her favorite podcast and cuddling with death. Oh, oh my gosh. I didn't see that on there. Don't cuddle with death, people. That doesn't mean well. Dad can enjoy his morning commute listening to his favorite podcast with a hot cup of coffee and his Tales of Bedlam travel mug. Junior and Junior Et will be the talk of their school with their favorite colored tales of Bedlam t-shirt. Ooh, my favorite color is the the forest green one. Death Looks likes amazing. the black. Oh my gosh. Hoodie. Apparently Mecca's be- Mike is <laughs> apparently Mecca or Mike is being a little grim tonight. <laughs> oh my gosh. How can I get all this wonderful swag? You ask yourselves. Just go to our website, www.talesofbedlam.com, and click the big swag button right at the top. Easy peasy. It could be lemon squeezy. <laughs> uh, I love lemon squeezy. That's funny. For more information, you can also email us at talesofbedlam at gmail.com, tweet us at talesofbedlam, or give us a call at 417-501-4681. We would love to hear from you. So the little girl has traveled the earth. She went to the sun. It tried to burn her. Uh She went to the moon. It wanted to eat her. Wow. Now, where's she going to go? I don't know, but you're freaking me out a little bit. At this, she ran swiftly away and came to the stars, which were oh, kind and good to her. Mm-hmm. And each of them sat on its own particular little chair. Oh, they had the camp chairs as well, My apparently. gosh, there's a lot of little chairs in this mm-hmm. story. Just the little, little chairs. It's a, they're just so cute. But the morning star rose and gave her the drumstick of a chicken. What? And said... If you have not that drumstick, you cannot open the glass mountain. And in the glass mountain are your brothers. What? What? (laughs) (laughs) The stars gave her the drumstick of a chicken. Of course. Which is a key that opens the glass mountain. Obviously. Um... Okie dokie. Like we've said before. They were eating mushrooms. These stories, you think you've heard it all, and they just keep coming up with new stuff. You couldn't even, you couldn't make that up if you tried. Oh, oh, I I could. Really? You, if you were to just sit around thinking of something, I wonder what would open a glass mountain. A drumstick. The drumstick of a chicken. Mm. No. I would have probably gone with the wing. It's more key like. <laughs> but uh No. I need a key for my mountain. I wonder what hmm. Oh, Some chicken hmm. wings. I do like chicken with wings. Spicy garlic sauce. What? Shut up. 
That's what happened. She ate it, and then she didn't have a key. Well, don't. Spoiler. The maiden took the drumstick, wrapped it carefully in a cloth, and went onwards again until she came to the glass mountain. Oh, wait, wait, wait. She walked all the way to the sun and all the way to the moon and all over the world, but didn't see this glass mountain before. Well, she didn't know that her brothers were in it. So she just walked by it and was like, oh, that's a nice glass mountain. Well, it is a glass mountain. Should she not have been able to see mm-hmm. into it? I don't know. It's, again, it doesn't make any sense. The door was shut, and she thought she would take out the drumstick. But when she did, the cloth, it was empty. Oh, no. And she had lost the good star's present. Oh, no. Dum, dum, dum. She lost the drumstick. How I, careless. She just forgot that she had eaten it. Well, she, well, she eaten only, it. She'd only taken a loaf of bread and a pitcher of water and then traveled to the sun and the moon. I'm pretty sure she'd ran out of food. I'd be hungry by now. I'm hungry right now. Let's go get some wings. <laughs> After this is done. Uh, What was she to do now? She wished to rescue her brothers and had no key to the glass mountain. The good sister took out a knife, cut off one of her little fingers, Mm -hmm. and put it in the door and succeeded in opening it because that's what I would do. (laughs) How does that even... (laughs) How does that equal a chicken... So, drumstick. Just to say, I was to given uh, to be given a, a chicken drumstick and said, "This will mm-hmm. open the door mm-hmm. to the glass mountain." Mm-hmm. And I lost the drumstick. Mm-hmm. The first thing I would do would cut off my finger and try to stick it in the keyhole. No, I would go find another chicken drumstick <laughs> and make fry up another drumstick. And try that drumstick. That is and then, point. if that didn't work, then I might cut off my finger and put it in the hole. No, I still wouldn't do that. Doesn't make any sense. <sighs> so, she cut off one of her little fingers, put it in the door, and that opened it. Yay! When she had gone inside, a little dwarf came to meet her who said, My child, what are you looking for? I am looking for my brothers, the seven ravens. She replied. The dwarf said, The Lord Ravens are not at home. But if you will wait here till they come, step in. Thereupon, the little dwarf carried the raven's dinner in on seven little plates and in seven little glasses. Uh, on seven, seven little glasses, yeah. And the little sister ate a morsel from each plate. Is this like the the three bears again? Um, and, or, or the seven dwarves. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. 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 recurring theme that we don't have any idea what it means. Hmm. <laughs> and from each little glass, she took a sip. But in the last little glass, she dropped the ring, which she had brought away with her. Now, did, did she, she do she that on purpose or you know, by accident? I think it was probably an accident. I was just going to say that because she's dropping chicken wings everywhere. <laughs> she's apparently pretty, pretty kind of clumsy here. I don't know. Suddenly she heard a whirling of wings and a rushing through the air, and then the little dwarf said, Now the Lord Ravens are flying home. Then they came and wanted to eat and drink, and looked for the little plates and glasses. Then said one from the other, Squawk! Who is eating something from my plate? Squawk! Who is drunk out of my little glass? Squawk! It was against his mouth. What? Oh, sorry. Try that again. It was a human mouth. And when the seventh came to the bottom of the glass, the ring rolled against his mouth. Then he looked at it and saw that it was the ring belonging to his father and mother and said, Squawk! God granted that our sister may be here, and then we shall be free. Oh, my God! Now, how, from a ring, do they come to the conclusion that their sister is there? 
Apparently it was a very distinctive ring. Could, she took it as a keepsake to remember her parents. I don't know, man. Could you not have been like, one of our family is here? Um, True. It mm. could have been the mother or the father, or they could have had, you know, seven more kids. Apparently they didn't believe in birth control. <laughs> Who knows? And last they knew, the little girl was dying. That's true. I agree with you. That makes sense. When the maiden, who was standing behind the door watching, heard that wish. That was a wish? God grant that our sister may be here. Oh, it was a wish. They were just hoping. That's what that meant. Was it? They were saying, oh. God grant that our sister may be here. Then we shall be free. I see. So they were wishing, they were that, wishing that, that she would she be there. there. Okay. That makes, makes more a sense. little more sense. Not much more, but a little. And a little is always good. They can always be like, and hopefully she brought the chicken leg. Yeah, because we're hungry. The drumstick. We're tired of this little small glasses and plates. We wanted some chicken. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when the maiden uh, who was standing behind the door watching heard that wish, she came forth and on this, all the ravens were restored to their human form again, and they embraced and kissed each other and went joyfully home. So maybe it was her fault, because how does she break the curse? It's still not her fault. I don't... I, I, I never I mean, thought I agree. it was her fault. I agree, it's not her fault, but it's so weird that just her presence breaks the curse. So when... The father wished that all his sons were ravens. That energy revived the daughter energy. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> what? I'm just going on a theory no, no, here. I'm right? following. Revived I'm following. the daughter. Okay. And then that, uh, now she's good. So she takes that energy back to them and it turns them back into people. Gives it back. The energy that it took to turn them into ravens. She doesn't need it anymore because now she's strong and healthy. So she... I'll buy it. I'll buy it. Disperses it back to the ravens, and now they're people again. And they go home, and they're happily and joyful, and they don't punch the dad in the face and say, why did you turn us into ravens, jerk? Mm. I mean, it's as plausible as know. any other explanation of the crazy story. Who knows? It didn't make any sense. Was there a moral in this one? Mm, there wasn't. Not really. Don't lose your chicken legs. Your drumsticks. No. When you Don't wrap them up, them. put them in your pocket. Check if, it occasionally to make sure it's still there. Don't eat it. You need it as your key. Yeah. If if someone gives you a chicken drumstick and says, this is the key to the glass mountain, just keep track of it. Right? I guess so. Or else you'll have to cut off a finger. <laughs> that's, that's not good. Very odd story. All right. We did it again. We got to the end. We're still alive. For now. Dun, dun, dun. Somebody might die in the next episode. We don't even know <laughs> what the next episode is. <laughs> uh, Good night. Bye.